Hi, I'm Karen Fletcher, CEO of AICHE's Rapid Manufacturing Institute, an institute focused on process intensification. And we're here at AICHE's annual meeting in San Francisco, and there is a topical conference on process intensification at this meeting. And I have with me a very distinguished panel of experts in that area, and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, starting with Billy. Sure, Karen. I'm Billy Barton, the Global Operations Technology Director for the Dow Chemical Company, and uh, very happy to be here. Right, I'm Ann Gaffney, and I'm a DOE National Lab uh, Fellow and the Director of Science and Technology at Idaho National Laboratory. And I'm David Scholl, I'm the Chair of the School of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering uh, at Georgia Tech. Great, thanks, and welcome, and we really appreciate the time that you're spending with us today. As you can tell, we have a very diverse panel with us, uh, industry, academia, national labs, and I wonder if you could each share some of your perspectives on process intensification. Um, maybe we'll start again with Billy. Sure, uh, Karen. Uh, uh, process intensification is really critical for the chemical industry as we look at our sustainability goals. From a Dallas perspective, we have goals around energy intensity, waste intensity, raw material efficiency. All of these are directly aligned to process intensification. And if you look at our chemical manufacturing footprint, getting more capacity out of the existing footprint or shrinking that footprint to be more impactful, better stewards of the resources that we use on a daily basis, those all fully align with the principles and practices of process intensification. Yeah, absolutely. Anne, how about you? Yes, um, at the National Lab we're working with academia and industry trying to bridge a gap, taking discovery through development, uh, passing the valley of death that you hear about so frequently, and helping to commercialize new technologies. We have a uh, standing ca uh, catalysis group, so we, we envision if we can lower the energy barrier of uh, processes, make the transformations more selective, we'll reduce the waste, the carbon footprint, and also the energy required in the technology. Okay, great, thank you. David? I think process intensification is a really exciting thing for universities to be involved in. Uh, on the education side, uh, it's really important that we're educating students that know about these concepts because they're the people that will actually run the plants and make decisions in the future, so that that's an important thing. And then just as at the national labs, we have many folks who are involved on the research side. And I think if we can have really productive partnerships between universities, national labs, and industry partners, you know, that's the path to creating the technologies that will really change things in the future. Yeah, I do think it's gonna take all three entities in order to really be successful. Right. The students have to be trained and understand intensification principles from the beginning when we're designing new processes and as Ann said getting getting to commercialization is a really critical step it's a high barrier for implementation of new technology and then the more the industry adopts it the greater impact we can have on the greater good so uh, thanks you stole my thunder on that but that's exactly the beauty of having the three of you here today so so Billy and Ann I'm going to ask you the next question what do you see as some of the barriers for adopting process intensification technology more broadly? Yeah, so it was uh, many of them, and a few that come to mind are first of a kind. There's always the uh, risk aversion of doing, putting a lot of capital investment into something new. So how can we uh, reduce that risk? And one of the approaches that people are looking at is modularization, so that the investment will be lowered and the overall impact will be a lot less risky. And if you can incorporate that into existing capital investment already in manufacturing sites, so that you can do a demonstration, essentially, on that footprint. Mm -hmm. yeah, certainly, when you talk about sustainability and process intensification technologies fall in that space, it has to be economically sustainable as well as good for the planet and good for the environment and good for the people. That economic risk is really, I think, one of the key barriers. If you look at the chemical industry, what we've done over the last 100 years has gone to bigger and bigger and bigger scale. We have world-scale ethylene plants that are 1,500, 2,000 kTA. You're not gonna break into that integration with a brand new technology that's unproven. Right? So you have to find a route to be able to prove that as a, as a bolt-on technology or demonstrate it at sufficient scale that will allow the industry to accept the risk 
of scale up. Mm -hmm. That's really one of the key challenges. If you look at a lot of what the university's done, uh, small companies that are producing uh, process intensification technology, the real trick is getting from a lab demo unit to a test bed. Test bed to commercialization is a huge step, and in our industry requires lots of capital. So mm -hmm. even making that first step is a capital intensive. Play. Yeah, those are all great points, and it's also a reason why the U.S. government is investing in process intensification, and soon we hope to hear the announcement of a manufacturing institute dedicated in that area to bring together this community and address some of these barriers. So David, um, what advice would you have for students who want to learn more about this area and ultimately play a role in broader adoption of this technology? I think there's, there's two things I would suggest. The first thing actually goes back to what Billy and Anne were just saying, that ultimately these decisions are economic decisions. And so, you know, what I would say to students is you need to learn how plant economics and how those decisions get made. Because any new technology has to be measured against that kind of scale. The other thing I would say is that if you're in your design project or you're doing an internship or you're doing a co-op, Ask the people around you about what are other ways to achieve this technology goal. Even though you're probably at a plant where maybe they're doing a separation with distillation today, even just asking what are the other possibilities? Could, could you separate these things with a membrane? Could you do it with adsorption? And just to understand how people think about it and to going back to what we were talking about before, to start to understand what are some of the reasons that people don't do those things. Because understanding those, both the real and perceived barriers, that you have to understand those things before you can move forward. Yeah, those are all great points. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for joining me on this panel today. It was a short discussion, but rich, and I think bringing the diversity of your experiences and perspectives together um, has provided for a very good interview. Uh, and so this concludes our interview for the AICHE Connected Community. Thank you.